Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Prof Mukri uh, from the ONG departments. Uh, it's nice to see that people are actually uh, having a lot of questions about PCOS. So the next topic will be given uh, from our department, Orthopedic Surgery, uh, by Dr. Loh Kuang Weng, uh, also known as Dr. Melvin. Uh, he is our own graduate. Uh, he's uh, graduated from UM and also did her, his um, postgraduate uh, training in New Steam Laya and just uh, graduated into 2022. So his topic will be about our joints, uh, revitalizing the joints, comparing the efficacy of PRP or plus pilot rich plasma and hernia acid injections in knee osteoarthritis. I'm sure that all of you is uh, either you yourself or your relatives have had some uh, sort of treatments in knee osteoarthritis and this is very common uh, if you go to any orthopedic clinics or in fact in any of the general practitioners outside. So without further ado, I think we're going to uh, listen to Dr. Uh, Melvin on his presentations. Thank you, Prof. Uh, welcome everyone to my talk. Basically, today I'll be talking about the uh, management of uh, knee osteoarthritis. In particular, I will be focusing on injectable treatments. Uh, this has been getting uh, a lot of hikes recently, especially when a lot of uh, centers have been uh, have started to provide injections, including uh, GP clinics and as well as our clinics as well. So this is the outline of my talk. I will talk briefly on the definition of knee osteoarthritis. Then I will zoom in briefly on the epidemiology of this condition in our country. I will briefly talk on the different types of intra-articular injections that are available, the pros and cons for each, as well as its supportive evidence. And I will end my talk with a take-home message. So basically, knee osteoarthritis is a chronic joint condition that is characterized by degeneration of the cartilage with reactive new bone formation in the knee joint. So in terms of the epidemiology, it typically occurs in uh, elderly patients. So based on this paper back in 2019, among a uh, population of age 55 years and above, up to 33% or one third of the Malaysian has uh, knee pain. And among those, up to about 30% actually uh, is diagnosed with primary knee osteoarthritis. And this condition is expected to increase in terms of uh, prevalence because our society is heading towards an aging society. So by 2044, we expect about 14% of our population to be aged more than 65. And by 2056, about more than 20% of our population would age more than 65 years and above. So that, that, uh, that dictates the, the gravity of this uh, condition. So there are many risk factors involved. Uh, the very obvious reason is age. With advancing age, there is a tendency to develop primary knee osteoarthritis. And this is mainly because knee osteoarthritis is a wear and a tear condition of the, of the joint. Uh, females are more prone uh, in terms of BMI, higher BMI or patients who are obese may pose greater risk of developing earlier uh, knee osteoarthritis because the weight-bearing forces that go through the knee is much greater. Apart from that, occupation, any family history of osteoarthritis, as well as previous traumatic knee injury, also predispose to the development of knee osteoarthritis. So typically, patients will present uh, with four types of uh, symptoms. Number one is joint pain. In particular, they will develop mechanical knee pain, meaning to say that the pain occurs when the uh, patient starts to weight back or when they walk. Number two is stiffness or otherwise reduction in the range of motion. Number three, they may have deformities such as uh, bow legs and knock knee. And number four, they will sustain reduction in terms of function where they have difficulties in performing daily activities that requires emulation such as going up and down the stairs. Radiographically, it can be uh, staged uh, in terms of its severity from grade one all the way to grade four. So at grade four, at the worst end of uh, osteoarthritis, in terms of uh, x-ray finding, you can see that there will be extensive narrowing of the joint space, which refers to the space between the, the femur bone as well as the uh, upper part of the tibia bone. And also they will develop a lot of osteophytes, which are new bone formation, uh, subchondrial sclerosis, as well as a subchondrial cyst. So pertaining to injectable treatments, which I will talk on, are mainly uh, prescribed to patients who fall within grade two to grade three. 
because in very severe forms of osteoarthritis or grade 4 osteoarthritis, the uh, success rate for injectable treatments are much less predictable due to the extent of the cartilage damage. But as for grade 2 to grade 3, they tend to be milder forms. So when we inject treatment in, the success rate is much higher. So I will briefly talk on the different types before I zoom in on this efficacy. So the, the, the well-known type that has been in place for longest period ever is a steroid injection that's been around for a long time. And then second, I will talk about hyaluronic acid injections, which are technically gel injections. Uh, and number three is platelet-rich plasma injections. So steroid injections, simply put, is injection of steroid directly into the knee joint. So steroid is known to have uh, anti-inflammatory function. So it will directly induce a state of anti-inflammation in the joint in an effort to reduce pain. But sometimes for an immediate pain, the physician may consider injecting uh, anesthetic agents such as lignocaine to numb the joint so that the patient can experience immediate relief of uh, pain symptom. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, it has the longest history in terms of steroid injection. Uh, with a lot of evidence suggesting that it has rapid uh, treatment uh, efficacy uh, in terms of pain reduction. But this pain reduction may not be sustained in the longer term when compared to other injections. So if you look into our own Malaysian clinical practice guideline on the treatment of knee osteoarthritis, it was last updated and published in about 10 years ago. So it's not so recent and it was published in 2013 also shows that from then, the available evidence uh, suggests that steroid injections is effective in providing short-term pain relief at one week up to three weeks. However, when it comes to function, you, you, utilizing all this functional score assessment, there is no demonstrated improvement. But one thing for sure, it does reduce the pain and it does reduce the pain fast. Uh, these sort of steroid injections are very useful, especially in patients with acute flare-up of osteoarthritis uh, because it helps to reduce inflammation and pain. And uh, combination of uh, steroid and uh, gel injections in a single injection should be avoided because the combination does not work well after a week. So steroid injection is seldom combined with gel injection. So steroid injection should be given. And if it is given, it is given by itself and not mixed with other agents. However, as physicians, when we are injecting steroid injection, we must be very sure that the patient's knee pain is not due to any form of infection. This is because steroid injections does suppress the immune activity within the area. So if there's any uh, uh, knee pain that is due to infection and we inject steroid into it, that would further exacerbate the infection and can be disastrous. The other thing to note is that uh, injection of steroid into the joint repeatedly does result in cartilage thinning. So that's the reason why for steroid injections, it should not be given too many times in a year, up to a maximum for about four times a year. So the more they give, the more the tendency it is for the cartilage to thin off. Therefore, this may speed up the disease progression and may result in a faster need for a knee replacement surgery. So when we look at the MRI studies that specifically look into this matter, uh, comparing between patients who had steroid injection for two years every quarter of the year, comparing with another placebo group utilizing saline injection, it shows that patients who has uh, repeated steroid injection resulted in a significantly greater volume loss of cartilage. And in terms of the uh, x-ray grading and also narrowing of the joint space, patients who had repeated injection does have progressive worsening of uh, this uh, joint space as well as uh, increase in the severity of the uh, OA. Although this can be debatable because even without steroid injection, uh, patient does progress into serial forms of OA with time. But when they compare with groups, comparing between two groups, uh, two different cohorts, they did observe that despite, despite comparing both groups at the same baseline, that the steroid injection group does result in faster uh, progression of disease with repeated steroid injection. 
And there is a famous paper that was published in a reputable journal, JVJS, also shows that with every steroid injection, it increases the risk of arthroplasty, meaning they need uh, knee replacement surgery by up to 10% at a decade of follow-up. So the more they have, the more steroid injection they need, the faster it is, they will eventually require a surgery. Now we're going to move on to the more exciting bit. Uh, we're going to talk about gel injection or hyaluronic acid injection. Now, hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring polysaccharide in the cyanobal fluid. It is present in all of us, in all of our joints, uh, especially in knee joint. And it is responsible to maintain the viscosity or the thickness of the synovial fluid. So it has two uh, proposed mechanisms on how these gel injections can help. Number one, injecting the gel itself provides uh, visco supplementation, meaning it lubricates the joint and it, uh, it, it, it acts like a shock absorber in the joint. And it does so by maintaining a boundary layer around the pain receptors, thereby it reduces the stimulation of these pain receptors so patients don't, don't uh, experience pain. And number two, uh, the fact that we inject this uh, exogenous or externally injected uh, gel injection also induces our own body in the knee joint, in the synovium tissue, to produce more of its own uh, hyaluronic acid uh, to further nourish the uh, knee joint. So it has a lot of effects in reducing inflammation, uh, protecting cartilage in hopes of restoring the joint function. Hyaluronic acid injection or gel, inject, gel injections based on the available evidence does provide longer lasting pain control compared with steroid injection. When they analyze a lot of uh, this randomized control trial uh, involving 606 participants, they do see that in the initial phase, because steroid is an anti-inflammatory agent, it is very effective in uh, reducing pain compared to a gel injection. But by four weeks, the effects are both comparable, but by eight weeks and above, hyaluronic acid injection does show superiority in terms of reduction in pain. So the effect in pain control, although a bit slow in the initial phase, does pick up towards the end and is sustained for a longer period of time. Not only that, gel injection also delays the need for total knee replacement surgery, where in one study, when they compare between uh, patients who never had gel injection, patients who had one gel injection or more than five gel injections, they, they can see that as, as they inject more and more, it further delays the need of surgery all the way from one to about four years. So there are various uh, forms of uh, product in the market that uh, contains hyaluronic acid and uh, it, they usually play around with the molecular weight. Now, what has been shown is that the product that has a molecular weight between 500,000 to 4 million Dalton produces the best optimum stimulation because it is not too big, it is not too small, it adequately fits into the receptors of the synovium cells to stimulate the patient's or the uh, uh, the patient's own cerebral tissue to produce its own hyaluronic acid, because eventually whatever that we inject will wear off. So, it, the body needs to needs to take note of this, to get that stimulation required for it to produce more of this hyaluronic acid, so that the effect of pain control, uh, is sustained for a longer period of time. So, what is the disadvantage? Largely, there's not much of disadvantage. The only thing that we can think of or that many people have uh, think of which is rarely happened is allergic reaction to whatever that is injected. This is also rare because the hyaluronic acid injection that, they, that we inject closely mimics the, the molecule that we have in our body. So, so, so far in my, in my limited experience of you know, injecting gel into a patient's knee joints, I have not encountered one that has develop a uh, local uh, allergic reaction, although this is technically possible because it is an exogenous product. Now, when we look back into our clinical practice guideline, into our clinical practice guideline, uh, this was way back in 2013. And back then, 
there has no strong evidence to suggest the uh, supplementation of uh, uh, visco supplementation with gel. And this was way back in 2013. So in, in recent years, back in 2021, a group of Malaysian doctors uh, comprising of uh, geriatricians, uh, arthroplasty surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, medical specialists, they come up with a consensus after reviewing the latest evidence. And they did see that there is a role for intraarticular injections, particularly knees without effusion, meaning there's, there's no active or acute flare of osteoarthritis then this group of patients can be subjected to gel injections. Whereas patients who sustain an acute flare, an acute onset of osteoarthritis, they may be better off with a steroid injection rather than hyaluronic acid because hyaluronic acid will work as well as a steroid in reducing the inflammation fast. So again, most of the studies focus on the effect on grade two to grade three. Grade two to grade three, uh, uh, severity of osteoarthritis because in grade four, it's very severe. Injections may not be, uh, may not have a predictable result. So when we look into all this uh, evidence with HA, a majority of up to 70 to 80%, almost all of the studies here says that there is a positive finding, especially with, re with regards to a reduction in pain. Now, moving on to the third and final injection, which is the platelet rich plasma injection. Typically, this product is obtained from the patient's own blood. So what it does is that we aspirate or we, 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 we withdraw uh, up to 20 to 30 cc of blood from the patient. And then this blood is stored into a, into a tube. All right? And this tube is then spinned in a centrifuge machine to separate it into different layers. And in particular, we will extract the platelet rich plasma region to be injected into the patient's joint in, in hopes of reducing inflammation, all right, and also to promote cartilage uh, regeneration and repair. So PRP is an emerging therapy, uh, especially with regards to osteoarthritis. Uh, it, is, it, it contains a lot of these uh, anti-inflammatory mediators and as well as growth factors and cytokines. And these factors helps to promote chondrocyte proliferation and also cartilage repair. Apart from that, the anti-inflammatory mediators that is present within that, that, that portion aims to reduce inflammation, to relieve the joint pain, and to reduce the synovium uh, hyperplasia and effusion in the joint cavity. And also, the growth factors would then promote the increased uh, hyaluronic acid production from patients' own synovium cells, much like the injection from uh, HA. So what is the pros of PRP? Now, PRP is initially used to treat other conditions such as ligaments and tendon injuries, chronic or acute injuries. So, so the, 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 the indication has only been uh, extended to osteoarthritis not many years ago in an attempt to see whether PRP injection does help to improve uh, pain as well as uh, function. Uh, in terms of duration, it's pretty much comparable to hyaluronic acid injection. The injection efficacy can last for up to six months on average to up to nine months. And because it's patient's own blood product, it does not have any deleterious effect on the patient's cartilage. And based on some systematic meta-analysis, uh, compiling all the randomized trial that people do all, all over the world, at six months follow-up, there is evidence to suggest that the mean pain score in terms of pain will uh, improve, improve much more in the PRP group when compared to the steroid group. This is quite, quite logical because steroid injections doesn't have a very sustained effect as compared to PRP as well as uh, gel injections. So what about cons? It cannot be used, should not be used more, uh, in acute in acute condition. This is because PRP actually induces a state of uh, healing in the cartilage. And with healing, you need that inflammatory process to occur. So if the patient has an acute inflammation and we inject uh, PRP in, it's going to cause more inflammation that may result in worsening of, uh, of pain. So among the debates is how many times of PRP injections do we inject? Uh, and what type of uh, PRP is best? Do we use the leukocyte-rich, meaning a lot of white cell-rich, 
uh, PRP injection, or do we use a leukocyte poor PRP injections? So these are among the debates. Uh, it does show that the more PRP injections they have, the better and more sustained the effect is. And uh, based on available evidence, three injections are definitely better than one. Now. And in terms of the types of uh, leukocyte uh, in PRP injection, well, there are two different schools of thought. The leukocyte rich group thinks that the initial inflammatory phase is important to generate a state of healing. Whereas on the other hand, the leukocyte poor uh, type of PRP, uh, the fact that it has less white cell and more of these anti-inflammatory mediators may be better to reduce the inflammation faster and reduce pain. But on the other hand, without the inflammation, you don't get the healing of cartilage. So when they compare these two types, it appears that the leukocyte rich type appears more effective in reducing pain uh, as compared to the leukocyte poor type. So because these two injections are compatible with each other, they are not compatible with steroid, but they are compatible with each other. When we combine it, we expect to see some kind of synergistic effect in terms of increasing functioning of snail molecules, uh, inflammatory molecules, cytokine growth factors, in hopes of enhancing uh, cartilage repair. But is this true? We are not sure. So we're going to talk about this a bit while. Uh, the other thing is, it's always the cost, especially in Malaysia. Uh, it is not cheap to inject. The average cost goes anywhere from about eight to 900 per injection for PHA. PRP is about 700 to 800. So easy it goes to about 1,005, 1,006 ringgit for each uh, injection. So when we look at the uh, randomized uh, trial, comparing between PRP, gel, and also a combination of both, the PRP group definitely scores better in terms of pain score uh, at 1, 3, 6, and 12 months. Their PRP group also shows uh, great improve, in, improvement in terms of the functional score, which is a physical activity scale, at one year when compared to gel injections. And on top of that, when they see the combination group between HA gel with uh, PRP injection, it results in even better significant decreases in pain and functional limitation uh, as compared to gel alone and better physical function at one to three months when compared to PRP injection alone. And in another study that also looks at these different forms of injections, you know, PRP, combination PRP with uh, gel, gel, placebo, and sterile injection, we can see that across the board at different timeline, whether at three months, six months, and 12 months, PRP or PRP combination with gel injection tend to fare better, whether in pain reduction, number one, number two, in terms of increase in the physical activity or functional score uh, of these patients. And uh, it's good to note that no therapy demonstrated a rise in adverse events linked to treatment in terms of safety. So the take-home message is gel injection is very effective, uh, especially in pain and increasing function. Uh, steroid injection is very good, especially if patients have an acute flare of osteoarthritis in an aim to reduce the inflammation fast and reduce the pain fast. Steroid injection works wonder. But on top of that, we may consider other modalities such as platelet-rich plasma injection, as well as a combination of PRP with uh, gel injection or HA injection, because this has been shown to be more successful in improving function and alle alleviating pain at three, six, and 12 months of follow-up. Now, despite all that I've mentioned about the injectable treatments, we must always be aware that injectable treatment only forms one part of the treatment in knee osteoarthritis. There are other parts of the treatment uh, protocol that we have to look into when we assess the patient. And uh, it's not just about injectable treatments that we consider. We always advise our patients for healthy eating, to lose weight if their BMI is on the higher side, to make some lifestyle modifications, to exercise if possible, and to also judiciously prescribe them with uh, painkillers and may consider glucosamine supplements uh, to reduce the pain and also to have a more sustained effect in, the, in managing pain and improving the patient's functional status. So here are my references. With that, I end my talk. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Melvin. I think there are a few questions here. Uh, 
I just answered the first one uh, online so about whether they should go to either orthopedics or sports medicines because I think these conditions has been traditionally been treated under orthopedics but now sports medicine is also seeing a lot of patients that is not uh, going for surgery so you can also see them in their clinics and they can actually also administer the uh, injections uh, to your knee. I think in terms of the cost, uh, generally they are around about we can get, I think the cheapest injection is around about 700 or 800 ringgits to injections. Mm-hmm. I think they can go up to about 2,000 plus. Uh, depends on mm-hmm. the molecular weights and also the brands of the uh, injections. Okay, there are a few more questions here. Uh, we try to answer as much as possible. Uh, so mm-hmm. Dr. Melvin, how do you choose patients who will receive HA injections as it's quite expensive? Is it more cost effective to treat uh, patients with NSAIDs and physio for long durations of time? It, the the treatment for osteoarthritis is uh, multifaceted. Uh, usually, we would prescribe patients with both non pharmacological and pharmacological treatment. So, in terms of analgesia usage, we would usually monitor the patients. So, aside from uh, advising the non pharmacological, uh, I mean non operation non operative uh, uh management such as reducing weight and all. We also will prescribe uh, patient with analgesia and offer injections if indicated, especially when patients present with grade 2 to grade 3 OA. But overall, with the treatment, as we follow up the patient, we will then assess if the patient failed to achieve a reasonable reduction in, in uh, pain and uh, improvement in function despite adequate uh, treatment with uh, painkiller as well as an attempt at injections where indicated, then these patients may be better off planned for a knee replacement surgery. So we don't normally uh, treat patients with one group that is prescribed with NNGCI and the other group we will go solely with an injection. Typically, uh, we will go through the, the, the treatment protocol. It's multifaceted. We look into various aspects in, in, their, in their treatment. So obviously, if they fail to respond uh, with adequate treatment, uh, whether all the measures that I've mentioned earlier, then there is an indication to, to, to operate on and to perform a knee replacement surgery. Okay, I think next question is, which one lasts longer considering the cost issue? And do the uh do we have all this in UMMC? And I think as, as we answered before, the cost is around about can be between 700 yeah. to about 2000. I think in terms of yeah, the effect, yeah, I think it's uh is is variable, right? Uh, Melvin? It's it's variable because even patients that prescribe that 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 comes in very severe forms of uh, osteoarthritis let's say grade 3 towards grade 4 they may not have symptoms as bad as those as those patients that come in with a milder form of uh, OA radiographically so it's really uh, subjective but in general uh, grade 2 to grade 3 they in general average 6 months to about a year uh, effect whether it's on uh, PRP or gel injections, but patients on grade four OA, which is like the severe form of OA, some patients that come to us do ask or inquire about uh any possibility of uh, injection. Uh, well, if they are really keen, uh, they have to understand that. Uh, we usually advise our patients that the results are not predictable. So even if you inject, you know, in view of the cost itself. Even if you inject the uh, the medication uh, HA or PRP into a joint, we cannot guarantee the success rate is there. And patient may still have pain the very next day because of the severity of the joint destruction. So between grade two to grade three, about six months to a year, between grade four, grade four, usually it's unpredictable. That's what I would tell my patient. Okay, I think maybe this is the last question. Uh, what is your opinion on product that use combination of HA and steroids that is available in the market? HA and steroids, personally speaking, mm-hmm. I don't have much experience. And for my reading, uh, it is seldom seldom being discussed and seldom being studied, the effect between a uh, combination of steroids with, uh, with HA. So it's it hard for me to comment on that because I don't have much experience on this. 
Yeah, I think but they don't they usually combine. Generally speaking, uh, from what I mentioned yeah. earlier, uh, the the effect is not sustained for more than a week or so. But that pertains to knee osteoarthritis per se, la. I think the combination of this sort of drug might be used in other joints such as AC joint, if I'm not mistaken. But as far as knee OA is concerned, I don't have much experience on this. It's a bit hard for me to, to, to comment. Okay, I don't. I think that will be the last question. So, sorry, we couldn't answer all the questions today. If you have uh, any further questions, you can always uh, come to our clinics or contact us directly. Uh, we do have our specialists uh, in our knee joints uh, clinic every Friday. Or you can contact Dr. Melvin directly for further answers. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this morning. And I hope everyone has benefited from the CME today uh, and have a good day today. Thank you.